Any first? Yeah. Okay, so um, <clears throat> some time ago, maybe a few weeks even, or a month yeah, or two, um, we were notified that the proposed uh, platform for 2020 for the California Democratic Party had included language in the health care plank um, advocating for a, a public option that would somehow uh, magically, I would guess, uh, uh, support or enhance the Affordable Care Act. And um, actually, most of us who've been working on this issue for some time uh, recognize that the public option does nothing to uh, to support the Affordable Care Act. In fact, it undermines uh, the Affordable Care Act, even if you think that's a step towards single payer, which some of us do and some of us don't. Um, we know that in California, we've been on record for over a decade that a single payer Medicare for all type system would work well for California as well as the rest of the nation. And we pride ourselves in California as being a model for the rest of the country when it comes to social and economic justice issues uh, in particular. And so, uh, so we are here at this convention to stand up for a single payer Medicare for all system do not interject a public option, which some of us are calling confuse the public option, because it just adds more complexity and actually more expense uh, to an already ridiculously complex system. Who is responsible for adding this for you? In my, um, this is, um, this is, I guess, considered hearsay, because it's, but it's from a reliable source. Um, but it was the um, chair, uh, co-chair of the platform committee, along with one other person that is on the healthcare uh, platform flank. Okay, so they have like subcommittees for the healthcare platform for environment. So it was the co-chair of that committee and one other person who happens to work for uh, Covered California as one of those people that are a navigator. You know, it, um, I would like to tell that person that there will be plenty of jobs for her to actually get people health care, not health insurance, once a Medicare for all health care plan uh, system is um, takes place in, Cal in uh, California and the rest of the United States. So there will be work for her, plenty of more work actually giving care. So so you mentioned she works for Covered Care. Is she lobbyist or is that her actual No, job? she works as a navigator for Covered California. Do you know, it's just like, navigator is like, because it's so difficult to actually navigate Covered California to get a plan, especially when they first rolled it out, it was ridiculous, that I believe, this is what I was told, that she is a navigator for that system. It could. That could be wrong. Maybe she has another position, but that's what I've been told. So it's basically two people um, out of pretty much the majority of the rest of the people on the committee for the health care plank that decided to to just take it under their uh, uh, wing to just insert this particular language. And the language says that it, they will um, adopt public option as a way to universal health care, a way to universal health care. However, it actually, we actually have in our platform, our preamble, the paragraph says single payer is the California principle to uh, to get to a path to universal health care. So we cannot have both. Only The single payer is the one that will cover everybody for far less, and it's proven. That's right, and, and we've been, I, get, I would just agree with what uh, Betty is saying that um, uh, not only from Cover California, but uh, insurance and actuarial backgrounds are, uh, you know, my understanding of these folks who introduced that language. So, um, so it, it would be perceived by us, those of us fighting, you know, in the struggle for this healthcare justice and single payer, that um, that they're trying what they can to keep uh, the big insurance, you know, and probably even big pharma. Uh, in the equation, and, and we're doing just the opposite. We have been assured uh, that actually now the recommendation of that chair, even who um, we understand was uh, was a party to that introduction, that they're now uh, recommending removing that uh, particular item. Uh, yeah. and, and the party leadership, which I presume is the chair of the California Democratic Party and other groups, are saying uh, that they're recommending the same, that it, that it should be removed. So we're here to back that up. We uh, would commend them if that's their intention. 
but we're not going to take it for granted. So that's why we're here to make sure that they make good on their promise and remove that particular item from the health care plan. Yes. yes. Okay. okay, great. We're now on health care. Oh, yeah! Woo! <laughs> Amendment 16, and our plank chair is Julie Sue. Where, where is she? Oh, there she is. Uh, so, I have taken a lot of testimony internal as well, and, I, and I'd like to hear from a fellow platform committee member. Um, and every year, you, every cycle, you hear me say, Do we want to? Define single payer, do we want to play parameters? Um, I will tell you that the work that I do, and it might be the oil of a lady, but I've been debating health care reform for about 40 years. Last year was my high school um, uh, reunion, and I, I debated the universal access in high school. I have mathematics degrees, I've been a medical economist, I've done actuarial work, I've been an attorney for the department. Department of Insurance for almost 19 years now. Um, I've sat on a fiduciary board of a hospital. I work with consumer complaints almost on a daily basis as well. So I think I have a broad perspective and I do listen to everybody. So um, if you don't feel like I embrace something right away, it's because I do listen and I am looking to see what is in the best interest of Democrats, what is in the best interest of keeping Democrats elected what is in the best interest of Democrats who are in purple areas whose seats are threatened. So um, we have taken uh, the amendment and um, as consensus language, we have taken out the second bullet that was supporting the current Affordable Care Act to include a public option. Yeah. Reiterated that we are gonna protect the gains in healthcare coverage established under the Obama administration. So that was the group that, and we have also included at the, uh, at the request of um, Sal Rizzoli, we have included long-term care in the enumerated additional benefits that she yeah. Thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, I don't know if the, the, those who have submitted amendments would like to speak. So we have, we have. there's a Betty, Dumas Toto. for unfortunately for single payer health care for 25 years. And um, I need I think that I need to reiterate why um, we as a principle in California we embrace single payer. Mm -hmm. And I believe that every, if, I don't know if everybody was here at the last convention when um, somebody came into our onto our convention floor and took that stage and actually spoke to us Californians and said, I, I don't think Medicare for all is the way to go. And that whole room of people erupted and booed him basically on the stage. With yeah. Yeah. So I don't understand why this public option snuck in there in the first place because that is the reflection of everybody that was in the room, which were California delegates, representing all of California, who blew this man off the stage. That's right. So right there, you knew all Californians wanted Medicare for all health uh, healthcare. You know that we were all behind this. Um, behind this. Um, so I'm going to read a little bit of an ex excerpts off of um, Kristen Magnuson, who is the uh, chair of Healthcare for All California. Um, Woo! Woo! A public option would not drive down costs by having insurers compete. The notion that there is competition in the health in insurance industry is a falsehood. Insurance do not compete for expensive and sick patients who are considered a bad financial risk. A public option 
option would not offer less expensive coverage. While it's true that a public option would not divert massive sums of administrative, excuse me, while it's true that a public option would not divert massive sums of administrative costs, profits, and lux flush executive pay packages, it will need to increase costs to cover its patients' pool, which will compromise the costular, cost <laughs> high-risk patients rejected by private insurers. In the end, the public option would need to employ the same immoral tactics used by private insurers to limit costs, limiting provider payments, denying care, and re restricting prescription drug formulas. We need to wrap up. Did somebody say anything? No. You, you need to wrap up. You've okay. exceeded your two minutes. So. Okay. That's fine. That's all I want to say is that we should not Great. Thank have you. a public option. Thank you.